Hello, good evening. There's certainly some seating here in the front still, uh, or the balcony is available as well for those of you who want to venture your way up to the second floor. It's locked? Oh, okay, it's just locked, so we're going to try that adventure. I apologize. <laughs> Well, welcome. I am high school principal Mark Smithberger. I am so happy you're here this evening. Uh, for us, this is really the first time we get to meet face to face uh, with with what will be a four year journey for us. Uh, we hope only a four year journey. If you make it more more than four years, that's not really a great thing. So we're going to keep it a four year journey. High school is four years, not five or six. Um, and tonight is about making sure um, you guys get a better feel for the schedule. And it's not for classes, kind of what you're signing up for in a logical way that hopefully makes sense. And really, it's, it's a chance for you as, as, a, as a family to start ch charting out the next four years of, of what that might look like. Which is kind of scary for us as parents to think, oh my goodness, in four years they're out of high school and all the things that go with it. But the reality is, we want to give you guys the best foot forward, and it starts tonight with just a scheduling meeting, courses you should take as a freshman, things you won't be eligible to take as a freshman, like you can't take English 12 as a freshman because you're a freshman, if that makes sense, right? So that's really what's gonna happen tonight. We will certainly answer questions afterwards. Uh, we ask you kind of go through the whole presentation first and, and save any questions towards the end, because we hope we'll answer a lot of your questions. If we're perfect, we'll, we'll answer all of your questions. Dr. Rubens has been perfect, I've never been perfect, so I'm sure you'll have questions for me when I get, I get done. So that's what we're doing this evening. Um, we are so excited for next fall. Uh, we're excited that you're allowing your students to go to our high school because we know one thing for sure is that in your world your kids are the most important thing there just like in my world my kids are the most important thing so you trust them with us that means a lot to us so thank you for trusting us that much uh, we want to be a partner for you over the next four years and part of that partnership is if you have questions we want to support you if you need help we want to support you we want to support your son or daughter and their their journey through uh Bridget park high school so without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Rubensaw. She's going to walk you through the scheduling process and, and what, what can take place and options you have. So guys, thanks for being here. Have a great night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening and thank you for coming. If you can't hear me, let me know. Sometimes I forget I'm holding a microphone and don't speak into it very clearly. We're going to talk about a lot of things that your students heard on a video and heard from Mrs. Getz and their eighth grade teachers. We work really well together, back and forth between the buildings. I've met with teachers who work with students who need accommodations. I worked with the eighth grade team. I've met many times with Mrs. Getz. So it should be a pretty smooth transition between the adults in your student's life. And if it's not, the feedback is really valuable, so you'll see at the end of this that I have a, a question in the evaluation. Please use it. Obviously, um, we want to improve this and make it really smooth. Um, tonight, we had two meetings back to back. This is the first time we tried that, so um, that's new. That was based on some feedback that we got, so we really do pay attention to that and try to make things better for you. So uh, the first part of this is for the parents that are in here that have students that are older, and these are just reminders. I figured I'd take advantage of your captive audience here. Um, so if you have a sophomore and they are still interested in Polaris, they still can apply, even though the deadline was before winter break. For those of you with younger kids, it sure doesn't hurt to hear this. There are some programs that still have openings, so they should go ahead and apply. There are um, seats all around in the back, in the, or down here, if you want to sit down. Feel free to come on in. Juniors, we have signed up all of the juniors for the SAT on March 2nd. That's the free state test. And they are able to opt out of it, but they don't have to do anything to register for it. Any other ACTs or SATs that they want to take, they have to register for it, you have to pay for it. But this one, we do all of that for you. We have Next Level Prep coming in. They're doing the SAT prep on February 17th for $59, which is probably $300 less than it's worth at least. So if you have a uh, junior and you want this to be the last time they take the SAT, it would probably be a good idea. We also will probably offer an ACT prep for the June test for those of you that are interested. 
we typically will encourage students to take the ACT junior year or the SAT, both of those really. They can study for those on Khan Academy, so um, that's free if they don't want to take that test. And then for juniors, obviously, we're hoping that they start taking some college visits and they can do that on their own time, but they can also miss school if they contact me, I'll give them the paperwork. Seniors, cap and gown orders started. They should order those. They go up in price if you order it, not pay for it. You get the cheap price. If you meet the deadline, you just pay later. So for those that have freshmen, rising freshmen, good to know, don't miss the deadline. You will get cheaper cap and gown. We had College Credit Plus night last week. I see some people in here that were there. If you're interested, the recording should be posted either today or tomorrow on our website. And you want to definitely fill out the intent to participate if you have older students that think they want to do that by April 1st. We don't really encourage younger students, 9th and 10th graders, to participate. They can. But we do want our juniors and seniors to seriously consider it. So we have classes in, in our building for LCCC. If your student plans to take those, that's the, that's the application that they would fill out. We went over with the students. I, I went into every single grade level and presented to the students about this information. The most common question I got was AP versus CCP. I will tell you that's probably an individual question that you should have with your student's counselor or with me. So. Those are the big highlights for the older students. So for everybody, these are our assistant principals and you met Dr. Smithberger already tonight. I think we have a pretty amazing staff. They work really well with the counselors and the teachers and I think you'll find them to be very responsive. I put this slide in here, but I will tell you Mr. Schuff has already announced his retirement. So we will have somebody new in for the A through CT students um, and once that is announced I will let you know I am the college and career counselor for everybody in the, the building so college and career questions go through me most of the time but I do want you to know that alphabet counselors also can answer college questions they're very capable of doing so so feel free to ask the person who knows your student the best if you feel more comfortable all of the information I'm presenting is pretty much on um, this reg in this registration guide online. It has descriptions of the classes, how you get an honors diploma, the graduation seals, all of those things. It is on our website already, so you can click on that on the Berea Mid Park High School School Counselor website. Graduation requirements are up here on the screen. I think that it's worth noting that world language is not a graduation requirement. And I'll go over that a little bit again in a minute, but a lot of freshmen who are maybe not such strong English students tend to think they have to take a world language. You do not have to take a world language to graduate. If your student is planning to be a four-year college student, I would say, and if they're not a strong English student, try to make sure that they start that world language junior year so that they can get two years of it, or maybe they want to start it sophomore year. But it isn't necessary to be a, re a freshman class if your student isn't very strong in English. We do tell students that if they plan to go to Polaris between freshman and sophomore years, you want to get your art, health, PE, and financial literacy done so that when you go to Polaris, you don't have to worry about that. The Polaris programs, including the ones in our building, give you free computer credit so they don't have to get that. An interesting thing that hasn't come up before with me, but has been coming up all over the last three weeks when I've been in the classrooms, is the kids are confusing health and phys ed. Those are separate things. They have to do two phys ed classes, and they also have to take a semester of health. So by doing stress management, they do not meet the health requirement. That's the first time that that's really come up in my entire career, so I don't know what that disconnect is, but just so you know. Financial literacy can be met by personal finance, financial management, economics, or honors economics. So the students can read in the re registration guide and see what they're more interested in. If they're not going to Polaris, 
then I would say wait and have them take that class as a junior or senior so that they know how to manage their money when they actually are starting to make it. Um, but it's okay if they take it early. It never hurts to hear that information. The state has a, a recommended common core for college. And here's where that world language comes in. So not a graduation requirement, but for four-year college students, this is the minimum that the state is recommending. I will tell you that I said to your students every year that they probably should go with four years of all the core classes if they can, so that their options are a little bit greater. And some of the selective colleges do require three years of a world language. Also, there are schools that don't require any world language, including Baldwin Wallace right across the street. So if they don't ever get that world language, they can choose to apply to a school that doesn't need it. Um, this is the honors diploma, which is a seal. The students need to get two state seals, and that's probably a whole other night of its own presentation. And I do have a recorded version of that that I'm going to re-record because the state changed a few things. So I will push that out through the middle school for all parents. And if we do end up having another seal night, I will talk about that. But we are meeting with the students individually to go over the state seals too. But this is one of the popular ones. And we want to make sure students, when they're planning starting in eighth grade, if they want to get an honors diploma, that they see what the requirements are. It's mainly our, our graduation requirements plus um, an additional science and an additional social studies, the three years of world language. And I know you may not be able to see it if, if you don't have the presentation on your phone. Um, the last one is a pretty high test score. So since they can choose to throw out one of these categories, we usually tell them plan to throw out letter H, which is the high test score, and meet the other requirements if you want your honors diploma. So in addition to those 21 credits, students do need to pass end of course exams and get two graduation seals. The most important end of course exams are the algebra and English two because they need to pass those to graduate. So if your student is currently in algebra, encourage them to get a good night's sleep and do well on that test. There are multiple opportunities to take it, but you're obviously going to be the best prepared during the class. What we tell students, because it's the research that shows us, if you do well in the class, if you're there every day and you're prepared and you're not copying your friend's homework, you're going to do well on those end of course exams. So encourage your students just to be engaged. What they're doing in English 1 next year will help them with the English 2. So those two English classes prepare them for that test. So those two are the most important. They do have to take all six tests. The biology and American history and government tests do turn into a potential opportunity for a SEAL. And that's what changed recently, so that's why I'll, I'll be re-recording that. I think if you listen to the presentation, I, I think it'll be easier to understand that. But just know you do need two graduation SEALs. So I know that's super confusing because I had a hard time. It took me a, probably a year to understand the graduation requirements. If you're not sure, just ask your student's counselor and they will always check to make sure that your student is on track. And again, we are having one-on-one -on -one meetings with our upperclassmen to go over this so that they know. Just covering PE waiver very quickly, I know a lot of students are either in band or in a sport or might even get into the show choir. Those are the three ways to earn a PE waiver. You do have to finish that PE waiver by the end of junior year. So if your student plans to play volleyball and gets injured and doesn't finish one of the seasons, then she would have to take two PEs or senior year. So that's how that works. It's not really hard to get that as long as the student is, is engaged. Eligibility for sports is really important. We are pretty good about making sure the students have enough on their schedule. It's then the student's job to pass enough classes. The biggest thing that students forget is that phys ed is a quarter credit. So say they have five classes that they pass on their seven period day, but one of them's PE, they would not be eligible because that would be two and a quarter instead of two and a half credits. 
So students just do well in their classes, and then you don't have to worry about eligibility. And they do have to have a 2.0 GPA. We tell the students that as often as we can so that fewer students get tied up with that. There are some programs from Polaris that are in our building. We're really lucky that we have a good partnership with Polaris. And tonight, these teachers are all outside after this presentation. So you can meet with them and go over what your student might learn in these classes. All of these come with computer credit automatically, so the student wouldn't need a computer class. So the broadcasting, that's the one that does the morning announcements and is recording our meeting and does a lot of stuff around the building. Sign Pro, our marketing class, they do everything to run a business, but what's most visible are all the signs, all the signage around the, the building and really the district. So that's what those two are. Pre-engineering and biomedical are a little bit more um, specific. If you're a good math student, engineering might be a good track for your, your uh, student, and if they're a pretty good science student, biomedical would be good. Those are all in our building, so the student doesn't have to go to Polaris. I just think it's worth it, even as eighth graders who are thinking about going to Polaris to start planning for that. Every year, Polaris revises their offerings, and there are, there's a table tonight. You can talk to the Polaris people, and they're wonderful about giving us great advice. These are the current programs. Pre-Vets new this year, and pre-nursing is, is the second newest program, so they respond to what the, where the jobs are in the market, and it's a really nice opportunity. Sophomores have a presentation and a field trip, and in most years, you will have an eighth grade night and a ninth grade night that if you get the opportunity, Polaris hasn't really announced that, at least that I know of, um, do that because your student can get some points toward their application their junior year. So this is a typical uh, schedule for a ninth grader. And they may have some different electives, maybe they're delaying music or something like that, um, but typically, this is what most of the students take. Again, I already spoke about world language. It's an elective they may or may not want. But when you look at the yellow sheets, and I know a lot of people here have those sheets in their hands, you can see when the kids are scheduling on their sheets, we're asking them to fill out both semesters. So obviously core classes take up two boxes because they go all year. Um, a lot of the electives are only semester electives, so they may need to choose one for each semester for that. Uh, if you have any concerns about that, Mrs. Getz can walk you or your student through that. But you do want to do, you want to fill up all of the boxes with something in the seven period day. If your student feels like they need a study hall, you can have a study hall, one each semester, so they need to put that on the schedule. Um, and then they would just have six classes. So the other thing that I guess I would say about that is if your student is going to be able to do their homework in about 15 minutes to 30 minutes on a typical night, they might want to take another class because we have lunch and learn where they automatically have an hour where they can meet with teachers and do homework. So um, if you think your student would not take advantage of the time and would maybe better served in a class, have them sign up for seven classes. So this is your dream schedule, those seven periods. That's your dream schedule. And then the boxes below that, I ask for four more electives that don't appear at the top in case, say, the student signs up for pop culture and all the seniors suck up all the seats. Then we would go to box number one underneath there, and we would say, oh, they want drama, so we'll try drama in that spot. And then if that doesn't work, we'll try the number two request that's extra. If your student really feels like that's oppressive to write down those things, they can also circle them on the back. But please make sure the things that they put either in one through four or circle on the back are extra things that didn't fit into the seven period day. Because otherwise, when we're doing the schedule, we'll just have to pick something that's open and they won't really have any choice. And we want them to have choice. Everything freezes on June 1st. so. You have now to talk it over with your student and their teachers and 
the counselors over there, and then they're going to input starting tomorrow, I think the 1st through the 8th, and then you, if things change, maybe they start really understanding the math a lot better and you feel like maybe you need to, to take a more challenging class or vice versa, then you just let Mrs. Getz know and she contacts me or she changes it in the computer depending on the time of year that that happens. But on June 1st, everything's locked in so that we can finalize the schedule. And that's a very solid deadline. So please make sure that if you change your mind about what you want your student to take, that you let Mrs. Getz know that. So for the students that are rising ninth graders, your sheets that you have in your possession now are due February 10th to the middle school. And as I said, the first through the eighth, the students are gonna be getting into the my app, which is the uh, planner, the four-year planner, they can even plan out their whole four years in that planner if you want them to. Um, and then those classes will roll into our scheduler. Your worksheets are due to your enrichment teachers, so please make sure that they, they find their way there and that your name is on them and that they're filled out. And then I'll work with Mrs. Getz to answer any specific questions that come up as you're going through this process if she doesn't know the answers, although she's pretty skilled at understanding our process too. So you'll work with Mrs. Getz until June. And then after June, you roll into our building and then you'll work with your alphabet counselors here. If you are a parochial student and you are coming here next year, we're glad to have you. And you would go through the records office and work on our website, do the online application, and then get your scheduling sheet to us as soon as you can to reserve seats in your classes. So the sooner the better. I think that that is going to open up on February 15th, last I heard. So important dates again. Um, your teachers did their recommendations last month. Well, earlier this month. I forget we're not in February yet. And then students are going to input their requests starting tomorrow. They can change until June 1st. And if you have upperclassmen and you're confused about what's going on with them, they're meeting with their counselors one-on-one. -on -one. We were hoping to be done by February 14th. Not a chance. Kids have lots of questions. It's taking a lot longer than we thought. My guess is we'll get to the rising 10th graders next month. So we're finishing up the, the rising seniors right now. So that's what's going on. So there's an evaluation if you're following along on your phone. And again, like I said at the beginning, we really do take those recommendations seriously. In fact, most of our programs start at 6.30 because of parent feedback. The only reason this was seven o'clock today is because of the dual meetings. So please do fill that out. And then we have several teachers out there. I think of seven or eight teachers out there. We have art represented, and I just noticed I didn't put Mrs. Burchette's class. That is the marketing class that does the Sign Pro business. And Mr. Conti's here for art. Um, I'm, I think that it's Mrs. Pacone that's here from Polaris Career Center. She works with Mrs. Chrysler. I think we have at least two world language teachers. I know there are a lot of questions about that. And then um, biomed, engineering, and broadcasting and computer science. Computer is probably the hardest choice to make. And in my last piece of advice to you, I will say, I, there's a slide in the presentation to the ninth graders that they saw that says, if you aren't already doing some programming, then you should start with the Microsoft Office class because the other classes assume some background. If your student is a pretty advanced math student, I don't think it's a bad idea to start in the AP Principles computer class, and that will be where they learn coding if they don't already know it. But if they're just playing on the computer a lot, that doesn't mean they're an advanced computer science student. So I know that is a big mistake, it's, but it's the number one misplaced class that we have every single year. So if you're not quite sure if your student's ready for anything besides the Microsoft or if they're a strong math student, the AP computer principals, contact Mrs. Getz and talk that through so that we don't have a hole in their schedule. 
So I will take a couple questions and then I'm going to release everybody and you're welcome to, if you don't want to speak with any of the teachers that are here, you're welcome to leave but do the evaluation please. If you're going to do the, uh, the fair first, then you can evaluate, then you can tell us if you think that that was worthwhile to have all those professionals here on their free time. So does anybody have any questions? Okay, the question is about the PE waiver and marching band. So the way that works is it's automatic. Once your student has any two of those three activities, so they could mix show choir and band or band with um, sports or do two sports, they can do the same sport twice. And then once that is indicated to me that they've met that requirement, I automatically put it on the transcript. So you, your student could still take PE if they want to. As a coach, I used to often tell my players to take the weightlifting class. The question is, the four years of marching band doesn't require, yeah, so the four years of marching band is twice as much as you need to. No, they just have to do any two seasons of any of those three things in any combination that they can come up with. You can imagine my Google form is interesting. Okay, so the question is about seals and proficient grade. And so that's actually mixing two things that are separate. Seals are different. You can get seals from the proficient score uh, on the biology and an American history and government. Um, and a proficient score is 684. But I just was in a meeting with the state on our snow day. That was fun. And they said that they aren't guaranteeing that that will be your student's cutoff score. That junior year in January is, is the latest that they can change it. And they change it all the time. But and I don't think that's going to be something for you to be too concerned about, but currently it's 684. That's the state, yes, the, that is the end of course exam that the student takes after they finish algebra, they take the algebra test after they finish bio, history, government, geometry, all of those tests. I would say truthfully, this, the class is well prepared the students to, to take the test. So get your students here every day and have them do their own work and I think they'll be fine. When we give the makeup tests, a lot of times the kids admit that they copied their friend's homework on the math and that's why they're there to take the test again. <laughs> Any other questions? I know the graduation requirements are super confusing and I promise you that we'll walk you and your students through that one step at a time. Any other questions? Okay. Oh, yes. Do you have more of these? Do I have more of the, no, the middle school has the yellow sheets. But if you make a mistake, it doesn't matter. You can white out, you can scribble out. The only other person who's gonna look at it is the counselor. So feel free. <laughs> We've had a lot of weird stains on those sheets. We still take them. <laughs> we try to wash our hands after. <laughs> Any other questions? All right. Well, so please take advantage of the teachers that are out there, and I'll stay up here to answer any other questions.